Welcome to our watch night sermon here at Elim Assembly in Kingston, Jamaica. As we approach the close of a year and the beginning of another, we express appreciation to our online audience. We invite you to continue being a part of our online family and to share our YouTube channel link with relatives, friends, and associates. We wish for you God's continued blessings in the new year and beyond. Our prayer is that all members of our audience have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. It is my pleasure to introduce tonight's speaker. He is Pastor Earl Anderson from Bethel Gospel Chapel and Billy Bay's Gospel Chapel in St. Elizabeth, Jamaica. Pastor Anderson is a graduate of the Jamaica Theological Seminary and Bethlehem Teachers College. He is the principal of the Woodlands Primary and Infant School in South Manchester. Here now is Pastor Anderson with tonight's sermon, Is This the Man? Good evening, my brothers and my sisters, there at Ealing Gospel Chapel in Kingston, St. Andrew. Mine is a privilege to share with us on this New Year's Eve night about the good news of salvation. And my topic this evening is, is this the man? Is this the man? Taken from Isaiah chapter 14, um, from verse about three to about verse 17. I want to begin my exposition and my sharing on this topic. Is this the man? And I want to just read verse 16 of Isaiah 14. They that see thee, that's those who see the devil, shall narrowly, which means to look upon with a sense of scorn, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, say, is this the man who made the earth a wilderness that causes cities to tremble and kingdoms to shake? That made the world as a wilderness and destroyed cities thereof that opened not the house of his prisoners? Is this the man? Let's look to the Lord. In prayer. Father, we thank you for this special occasion as we look toward a new year, 2022, that Lord, we will at this juncture, at this point, make up in our minds a decision to follow you than to follow that man who is insignificant, who is a creature, who is nothing, and to follow you O oh Lord, the King of kings and Lord of lords, bless your word to our hearts and bless your people here at Eden. In your wonderful name I pray. Amen. The right Isaiah points to a spiritual Babylon and he is making a comparison to this spiritual Babylon and its leader, Nebuchadnezzar, who were destroyed. The kingdom of Babylon was destroyed during the time that Daniel was in Babylon, during the time of the exiles, that God would use Isaiah to point to two kinds of destruction. One, the Babylonian kingdom under Nebuchadnezzar, and yet point to the destruction of the devil himself as Isaiah makes a comparison between Nebuchadnezzar and Satan. John says that in Revelation chapter 18 to chapter 20, he writes, How much she, that's Babylon, had glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she said in her heart, I sit as queen and I am not a widow and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in on her in one day, death and mourning and famine 
she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off from her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. I want to suggest to us this evening as we gather looking to a new year that we must also look towards a new period, a new dispensation when we, God's people, will dwell with him forever. This mystery, Babylon, the great mother of harlots and an abomination of the earth is a religious, economic system, a spiritual economic system that has moved from century to century from Babylon's days into the, the time of the great tribulation where this woman, this harlot, that many men and women have laid with her and lived deliciously with her and have made themselves wealthy through her and have committed abomination. There is the LGBT movement and all kinds of evil that pervade our communities and society is a part of this Babylon system, this great woman, this great mother of harlots. John says, I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints and with the blood of martyrs. This Babylonian system that started as it were during the time of Nebuchadnezzar will run its course through our time and through the times of the great tribulation but will come to an end just about the end of the great tribulation when this system, this religious, economic, spiritual system will be destroyed and its leader, the Antichrist. I would like to suggest therefore from the passage a couple points. The first is that in the passage, Isaiah is highlighting the devil's preparation. The devil's preparation. The Bible says, Isaiah says, hell is moved. The word hell there in the Hebrew is sheol, or in the Greek it is Hades. Hell is moved, which means hell is excited to meet this man. Hell is excited to meet this man who destroyed the world, who burned cities, who made the world a desolation, who kept people in prison. Is this the man? The Bible says hell is moved. Hell is excited to meet thee, says Isaiah, at thy coming. Those who are in the lake of fire, those who are in the grave, are going to be excited to meet this man who created havoc in the world. So the writer says the people who are waiting to see the enemy's demise will say, is this the man? Yet we find a lot of people around the world, even today, right there in Kingston, St. Andrew, who will follow Satan, who will worship him, who will become Satanist, who will become occultist, who will become the Illuminatis, and who will become all kinds of religious individuals who want to give their lives to this man, but he's no man at all. He's insignificant. So writer tells us that there's a place prepared for the devil. It's a worm, the Bible says, it's a place where the worms make their bed under the devil. The word worm there in the Greek or the Hebrew means maggots. Maggots form a bed for the devil. And let me tell you, my friend, if you are here tonight under the sound of my voice and you have not yet said yes to Jesus, the Bible says you too will have a personal worm for it is a place where T-H-E-I-R, your worm, their worm, die or not, not T-H-E-R-E -E, as over there or over there. It's their worm, die or not. It's a place where your worms, if you go there, die or not. But may I remind you that hell is excited to receive the devil. Kings and monarchs and leaders, the rich and the poor are waiting to see is this the man? who made the world a wilderness. But secondly, 
the devil's obsession. The devil says in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. The word stars in Revelation chapter 1 speaks of the angels. I will exalt myself above the throne and above the stars or the angels of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. You need to understand, my friend, that the devil is obsessed with power is obsessed with taking control and what God threw him out of heaven so many many years ago and he's now the God of this world and he's trying to destroy people the Bible says he comes to steal kill and destroy but Jesus says I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly the devil doesn't like anything to be living he comes to destroy he comes to steal may I suggest that he comes to steal your joy. He comes to steal your prosperity. He comes to steal your future, your children's future, your grandchildren's future. He comes to destroy. He comes to rob you of heaven and plunder you and put you in a place called the lake of fire. So the five I wills, he was filled with pride. I will, I will, I will. But God sentenced him, relegated him. So we're going to look thoroughly at the devil's relegation. The word relegation means the action of assigning to an inferior rank or position to demote. The devil was demoted. Somebody needs to understand that the devil has no promotion in God's kingdom. He has been demoted. He has been brought to a lower rank. God threw him out of heaven. And he's now the God of this world. So the writer Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 10, verse 12, 15 and 16, he says, Shall speak and say unto thee, those who are in the lake of fire with him, or in the grave with him, shall speak and say of thee, Art thou also become as weak as we? Do you understand what Isaiah is saying? That those who are excited to meet the devil, when he comes to the lake of fire, when he gets to hell, they will say, are you as weak as we? And though we call life unto us, you are insignificant, you are nobody. We thought you were powerful. But may I say to those of us who are still worshiping the devil by not surrendering your lives to Jesus, that you need to understand that the devil is going to be as weak as you. He's going to become like one of us. He's insignificant. He's powerless. But there is one who is all powerful. His name is Jesus. The writer Isaiah speaking of the devil's relegation, his demise, his relegation to a low rank or his demotion says in verse 12. Thy pomp which means thy music, thy celebration, is brought down to the grave. May I suggest that there is no celebration in the grave. There is no music in the grave. The devil who was Lucifer, the son of the morning, who had a beautiful voice, well, those who see him and meet him at his coming, there will be no music, there will be no celebration, there will be no festivities in the lake of fire. Thy pomp, thy celebration, thy festivities is brought down to the grave. And the noise of thy vials, which means the noise of your music, is brought down to the grave. There's no celebration in, in hell. There's no celebration in the grave. May I suggest to you, my friend, if you have never trusted Jesus, you need to trust him now because there's coming a day when there's going to be joy among the angels. There's going to be joy in heaven. There's going to be celebration from the saints. Because they are going to be with Jesus in the millennium and beyond the millennium to be in the new Jerusalem. John saw coming down. So the writer says, Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy musical viols. The worm is spread under thee. 
If you go there, worms will be under you. But not only will worms be under you, worms will be in you, for you will have your worm. And that word worm is maggot. Jamaica said maggot. Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning, how art thou cut down to the ground? Which did weaken the nation. Let me say to you this morning, this evening, that the devil has weakened the nations. The nations cannot materialize and, and fulfill its potential because the devil has weakened Jamaica, weakened Syria, weakened Israel, weakened Trinidad, weakened the nations of the world. We are unable to be productive. Your families have become weak. Your children's future have become weak. You cannot as it were, progressed because the devil has weakened the nations. All that you are going through, the challenges in your life, the problems in your life, is because the devil has weakened the nation. Even your physical structure has become weak. COVID-19 has ravished the bodies and destroyed many lives and, and people and sent them to a lost eternity, many of them. He has weakened the nations. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, says the Lord, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee. That word narrowly means to look at him with scorn. And they're going to say, is this the man? Is this the man we worship? Is this the man who created the mayhem and the catastrophes of the world? Is this the man who caused my children to die before they reach their full potential? Is man, but he's just a worm. He's just like one of us, they say. The writer Isaiah says, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, consider thee, say, is this the man? Why then do you worship him? Why then do you give your allegiance to him? Why not surrender today to Jesus? Why not say, Jesus, I want to be Lord of my life because the devil is just a man. He's insignificant. There's no pomp and pageantry about him. But one day the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords will come with 10,000 upon 10,000 of his saints and they are going to reign with him on the earth. That's the my man, Jesus. Fourthly, we're moving from the devil's preparation, the devil's obsession, the devil's relegation to the devil's oppression. Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 17, the devil made the world a wilderness and destroyed cities that opened up the house of its prisoners. Let us look at what it means when we look at the word wilderness. The word in the Greek translated or Hebrew translated in English means desolation. He made the word desolate. That word means a state of complete Emptiness or destruction or great unhappiness and loneliness. They say Christmas is the most lonely time of the year. Christmas brings on depression. May I suggest the Bible says he is the one who made the world lonely. The way the world, a desolate place, made the world unhappy. Your unhappiness is because of him. Sin came into the world and death by sin and different things happened. Cain killed his brother and murder became a part of our lifestyle even in Jamaica. Loneliness caused by death and separation. Unhappiness because of sin. My brother, my sister, my friend, the devil has brought the world into desolation. But the word wilderness means devastation. This means great destruction or damage. Severe and overwhelming shock and grief. Think about the many new, many murders in our country. The many negative news forecasts and broadcasts that we have been hearing. He has caused devastation, 
Look at the many countries, Syria, Afghanistan, and other countries, Haiti, that have been destroyed. Buildings have been burnt to the ground. Bombs have destroyed buildings. Beautiful edifices destroyed because the devil brings devastation. The Bible says he destroys cities. But he brings also in his oppression of humanity incarceration. The word incarceration means a state of being confined in prison or imprisonment. The devil, the Bible says, has kept many persons in prison. And may I say this prison is not just a spiritual prison. The Bible said the day you were born, you were born spiritually dead. You have been locked away and given up for dead. But Jesus says, I'm come. I came into the world this time, around this time, to die for your sins and my sins. He came to set the captive free. He came to bring the dead back to life. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Many, many murderers who are now incarcerated and, and become prisoners and have been given life sentences will never come out of the natural prison. But you today, my brother, my friend, can come out of your spiritual prison and find hope for eternal life in Jesus. For he came to set the captives free. The word wilderness means debilitation. That phrase, he weakens the nation means he debilitates the nation. He causes our strength to be reduced to nothingness. This is a part of the reason why as a country we will never realize our true potential. We say in our, in our pledge to increase in beauty, fellowship, and prosperity and to play our part but it seems that we are being muffled and we are being chained from realizing our full potential both here locally and overseas because the devil had weakened the nations the bible says in leviticus chapter 20 and 26 and verse 20 and your strength shall be spent in vain for your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruit. God said to Adam and to Eve, he said to the woman, I will break and multiply your sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he will rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou art hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life, not realizing our full potential. The earth has not realized its full potential, and every human being on the earth has not realized their full potential. The devil has weakened the nations, weakened humanity. But is this the man we worship? Is this the man we still are serving? Is this the man who is the God of our life? Yes, he's the God of your life. If you have not said, Jesus, all to you I surrender. If Jesus is not the Lord of your life and King of your life, then Satan still is the God of your life. So why worship this man? Why worship this man who is insignificant? Who is like one of us one day? Who will be like one of us? Who will fall down to the side of the pit and they will look at him and now will look at him and say, is this the man? How dare you keep worshiping him? 2022 must find you surrender to Jesus and live him for the true man. The man Christ Jesus. But finally, devil's condemnation. The Bible tells us there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. My brother, my sister, my friend, if you are Jesus, there's no sentence of death that still hangs over you. 
But Christ uh, nailed your sins to the cross. He removed the condemnation. And now he, he declares you justified as if you have never seen. He declares you righteous. He declares you born again. The devil's condemnation. Timothy says in 1 Timothy 3, 5 to 7, For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest be lifted up with pride, he shall fall into the what? Condemnation of the devil. Pride brought condemnation to the devil. Pride caused him to have a fall. Pride caused God to throw him with a third of heaven to the lower heavens. And he's now the God of this world. And what does he come to do? He comes to steal the murders we've seen, the, the thievery we've seen. Wherever they are found, he comes to steal. He comes to kill. I can think of George, all those two Chinese in this community who were killed. Those three women who were set to be killed. But the, the FBI, along with our police um, agents in Jamaica, followed the plot. Yes, the enemy comes to steal, kill. The, the COVID-19 virus, I believe, is also a ploy of the enemy to destroy as many. For the Bible says in Revelation 12 and 12, that woe unto the habitants of the earth and of the land of the sea. For the devil had come down upon the earth with great wrath because he knows he had but a short time. The devil knows time is running out. So don't you follow the devil. Don't you follow this insignificant creature. He's going to be condemned. The Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 20 that the devil was cast into the lake of fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. May I suggest to us this morning, if you have not yet said yes to Jesus, you too will fall into that state of condemnation. John says, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and whoever's name was not found written in the book of life were cast into the lake of fire. You know why? Because there are book of deeds. Each individual born into this sphere of life has a book of deeds. The day you were born, you had a book with your name in it, your date of birth in it, the date of your conception in it, and you, you have a date when every good or every evil, that book will judge you on the day. For if your name is not found in the Lamb's book of life, it means it is in the other books, your personal book. Every individual has a book, but your name can be transferred from those books to the Lamb's book of life. Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Will you switch your allegiance this morning, this evening, as we transition into 2022, will you change your allegiance and say, Oh, to Jesus, I surrender. I make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. I move away. I isolate from the devil, for he has nothing good to offer, for he's just like a man. Insignificant. And embrace Jesus, the one who has come, that you might have life and have it more abundant. Will you make Jesus Lord of your life right now? As I bring this meeting to a close, and as I wish for you a prosperous 2022, the greatest joy that you can bring to my heart and to the heart of God, even to the angels who will rejoice, is that you say yes to Jesus right now. I'm going to invite you to say this simple prayer of faith. Believe in God for your salvation, confessing your sins to him, and he'll give you eternal life. It must be a prayer from your heart. It must be a prayer of faith. It must be a prayer of confidence that Jesus will give you eternal life and he'll take away your sin. Will you pray that prayer with me quietly? Just mutter those words openly, even if it is silently. Utter those words and say, Lord, come into my heart. Shall we pray to him right now? And 
ask him into your heart. Let's pray together. If you are ready to make that commitment, let's pray this prayer of faith to him together. Father, I thank you for sending Jesus, your son, to die on the cross of Calvary for my sins. I have wandered far away from you. I have followed the devil too long. I'm making a right about turn and I'm committing my life to you. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. See me with your Holy Spirit. Give me your gift of eternal life. I turn from my sins this night and make you Lord and Savior of my life. Come into my heart. Give me your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. If you have prayed that prayer, I want you to just raise your hand wherever you are in this building. You will pray that prayer. Nobody saw you, but you're going to make a public statement by raising your hand and say, I made that decision. I prayed that prayer. I meant every word. And 2022 and beyond will be a new walk, a new start. Can I see some hands? Is there anybody who has prayed that prayer? God bless you if you did. Happy New Year. Healing. A happy New Year from Bethel and my family to yours. God bless you. Thank you.